Today, I'm going to be explaining and reviewing the Azito 18V 250mm chainsaw. Now, if you're considering this chainsaw, you're probably in exactly the same position as I was three years ago, where you're a complete beginner to chainsaws and you have this job which is just too small to outsource to a professional. And so you're kind of left considering, should I do this job myself? And so this video is made for the complete beginner in mind. The first and most important step about having one of these is that you need to buy chainsaw bar lube. It looks something like this and this is an essential part that you need for the chainsaw. Unfortunately, it does not come in the box so you do have to buy this separately. And so with that, after taking it out of the box and, it's, and you're getting it ready for use, the first thing that you need to do is put 200 litres of this chain bar lube into the chainsaw. But if measuring exactly the 200 milliliters is not exactly your thing, well don't worry, you have this little indicator here and it can tell you how much you put in. And as long as the volume is higher than that minimum line, you're basically good to go. So, that's the oil. And now I'll move on to some of the features and controls of this chainsaw. So, this front little mechanism here, it's called a chain break guard. And so, why does this exist and why is this a thing that is on the chainsaw? Well, a common hazard associated with chainsaw use is that you get an event known as a kickback but basically you'll be the chainsaw is happily spinning away and cutting and then I'll get stuck on the log where the teeth will not move and with so much energy being put into it with the teeth then not moving it's going to make both the chainsaw and the operator move instead which is something that you do not want and so in the event of this happening what will be happening is you'll be chainsawing away and let's just say there's a kickback you'll force it forward and then this will stop the chainsaw from spinning which in turn will also stop you from going over and potentially hurting yourself and this can stop the chain within one tenth of a second, which is incredibly fast. I mean, especially when you consider that this chain is moving at 4.3 meters per second. I mean, just think about that incredible speed out of this little unit, 4.3 meters per second, that's incredible. You obviously want this in the back position because if you have it in the front position, it's no different to trying to drive a car with the handbrake on. So now let's just do a bit of a dummy startup for how you'd operate this. So you make sure that the rope is in the back position. So front arm straight. And then for here, you use your thumb. That's the same button that you use to press the like button. And you put that here. And then for your finger, that's the same button you use to press subscribe. You press the trigger. And so you press it, press it in like so. And then after you've got it running, you can re then release the safety and operate as so. And note, when operating this chainsaw, there's no benefit at all to be able to change how fast you're going. And so once you have it on, just keep it on to full throttle. And furthermore, if this running at 98 decimals, you know, I have to wear a lot of personal protection uh, equipment. And your earmuffs are very important because that is way above the volume for which you should be wearing earmuffs. If there's a chainsaw, so gloves and eye protection and all that stuff as well. In fact, it's got all the little safety warnings in here for you in case you forget what they are. And so with the oil in, the brake in the back position, the safety button pressed and the trigger on, we're basically good to chainsaw, but before we go into cutting a log right away, there's one more little step that we need to do. So, you need to find a piece of cardboard or a bit of paper and then run the chainsaw above that piece of cardboard or paper for approximately two minutes. And the purpose of this is that you actually want to be allowing the oil to actually get all amongst the, the teeth of the chain. So that way it's all equally distributed. And so if you just pour the oil in and then start you operating it straight away, I mean, sure, there's gonna be a lot of oil here, but it's not gonna be equally distributed amongst the the teeth. And so <clears throat> what the purpose of this is, is that if you run it for about two minutes just on top of a bit of cardboard or a bit of paper, is that it'll give it about two minutes to equally disperse amongst the chain and it'll also start flickering, tiny amounts of oil start flicking onto the cardboard and the paper and then when this happens you know that the oil is equally, equally dispersed amongst the chain and you then are good to start cutting it onto whatever you want to cut. And so now onto the cutting itself. So do not be trying to use this chainsaw if you're cutting something that is thicker than 20 centimeters, or that's eight inches if you use the old currency of measurement. And anyway, if we're being completely honest, if you're a first time chainsaw user and, would, and if whatever you're trying to cut is thicker than 20 centimeters, you probably should be outsourcing to a professional anyway. So that's why I think the limitations of this design of this machine actually pretty much make it perfect for a first time chainsaw user. 
And so now with that all out of the way, I'll demonstrate this in action. So the first thing I really need to mention about operating a chainsaw is that how strong you are or how much brute force you can apply is just completely a non-factor with this. And so if you are cutting a wood and it's going across and it's cutting through a little bit too slowly for your liking, unfortunately it's not really much you can do about this. If you try to muscle into the cut and try to really force it in, all you're going to achieve is that you're going to shorten the lifespan of your tool and also to fatigue yourself as well. And at the end of the day, the log is going to take the exact same amount of time to get through as it would have without applying that amount of force anyway. And another thing too is that if you really do apply this force into it, you're more likely to get that kickback which I was talking about earlier. And so just to paraphrase all of that, just let gravity or do the, or the weight of the tool do the work for you. And if you're cutting in sideways, don't apply much more force than what the equivalent gravity would be applying if you're going from downwards. And now for cutting down trees. The first thing you need to do before applying a chainsaw to a tree is to do a 360 around the tree and to look at the possible directions that it could fall down. And if there is a potentially high consequence for the tree falling down in a certain direction, like say it's going to crush a shed or it's going to crush the house, well then, this job is too big for a beginner and you need to be going to a professional. But if, you if you've done a bit of a 360 and no matter what direction the tree falls, it's not going to do any significant damage, well then, you're good to go. And so with that, the first step is, is that you have to pick a side that you prefer the tree to fall. You can't guarantee that it will actually necessarily fall that way, uh, but at least you can put in the preference. And so, with that direction that you want the tree to fall, the first thing to do is to do what is known as a wedge cut. Where you sort of cut in like a little bit of a triangle in the side that you want the tree to fall. And once you've cut that triangle, you can then cut a straight line in from the other side, and by the time you get through on the other side, that'll most likely make the tree fall in that direction. And so that's cutting down a tree. Well, and what if you're just cutting a log or something that is already on the ground? Well, with this you do not need to put as much thought into it, but you do need to be a little bit mindful for how the pieces will fall after you've cut it, and just apply a bit of common sense and have a bit of a think about it and make sure that the piece that you're cutting is kind of supported on both sides so you're not going to get a nasty surprise and have a bit of a lot to fling up after you finish cutting through. Now another important tip about using chainsaws as well is to never actually touch the ground with the chainsaw. It's designed for wood, it's not designed for soil or grass and so letting soil and grass get into it is just basically going to ruin it. And so let's just say now that you've done your cutting, finished your project, you're happy with how everything is, and now you need to store it and you don't know whether it's going to be six months or a year until you need to use it again. Can you just put it on the shelf? Well, unfortunately, no. And that gets me to pretty much the only flaw of this chainsaw. And that is that when it's full of oil, it leaks quite a lot. In fact, it's even leaked to me as I was basically since the start of this video. And so with that, you need to take this cap off, tip it upside down and put it back into the chain loop oil and so you can use it in future. Wherever you store this, even if you do empty all the oil out, it is still going to leak what little traces of oil has remaining in it. And so I strongly recommend putting a bit of cardboard or something that you're willing to throw away under it and so then as it sits there for the six months or the year before you use it again, uh, it's something that you can just throw away when you get it and it'll be soaked in oil but there's not very much you can do about it. And it is a little bit of a flaw of this but at the end of the day, it does the job very well, so it is a bit of a minor flaw that I can forgive. And so now let's get to the harder stuff. What if you need to tighten the chain or loosen the chain or what have you? Or with that, all you need to do is unscrew this here and so it'll come off like so. And eventually this will come off. Now you can basically pop this chain off here and then you can clean out whatever bits you need to. So as you can see, I didn't really do a good job last time of cleaning this. And as a bit of a tip as well, I find that it's much easier to clean this if you have an old toothbrush because that'll allow you to get into the spots that you can't normally get into. So let's just say now that you've adjusted the chain tension, you're happy with how everything is. Oh, and you can adjust the chain tension as well just by putting a Phillips head screwdriver into here and adjusting it either way. You can make it tighter or looser, but uh, in the three years since I've had this, I've never had the need to actually cha change its chain tension, chain tension because it's been working pretty well for me. And another thing about this too is that how, how tight should this chainsaw be? Well. You want the chains, you want the teeth and you want the distance between the teeth and the and the bar itself to be approximately about three or four millimeters and that's according to the manual that came with this. And so that's my review and guide on how to use the Azito 18 volt for 250 millimeter chainsaw. 